Hello, ADD fam. So, for today's story, what will be the title? The story is, for one, Superhair 313. The owner of Superhair 313. And who else? And maybe some characters in, in between. There's a girl that, a uh, drywall lady that hooked me up with the owner of Superhair 313. So, let me begin. What is up? What is up? What is up? So, I was thinking back, once again, some crazy shit that's happened in my life. Stories that were out there. Wacky. And so, let me begin. This story takes place, we start back in the early 80s. Um, definitely the 80s. I was a freshman in high school. This is before I went to rehab. Because once I went to rehab and mental institutions and all that, I never went back to school that year. So, um, but I went to school in rehabs and mental institutions. There was a guy that I went to school with that was in school with me, Mike Livingston. Anyways, that'll be a shock to some people. Um, so, this was my freshman year. As I've discussed, I was LD, it was an LD class, and I was an LD class with a one Paul Parsons. Okay, Paul Parsons was a skinhead, anti-heroes, all that good shit. One of those guys, right? Combat boots, Doc Martens, skinhead, skinhead ideology, skinhead bolts, tattoos, all that. There was a, like a, you know, like a section of guys that, in our school, you know, punk rockers, skinheads, jocks, preps, druggies, the blacks, etc. Everyone kind of knows what I'm saying. So there was this guy, Paul Parsons. And Paul Parsons was an LD guy in LD class with me. And he was a skinhead and, like I said, all that kind of stuff. So, at this time, there was a scandal that went on. It was Rob Lowe. A lot of you people are going to know who and what I'm talking about. A lot of you are not going to have a damn clue. This is before a lot of you were born. So, like I said, I was... This is my ninth grade year before I went off to rehab. Mental institutions, all that. And, uh... So, Paul Parsons was in my class. And then... Damn it, where'd I mess up? Okay, anyways. I hope I don't have to start the video over. Shit. Three, four minutes in. I'll either know where I am right up here or I'm going to have to end this. End us. I think I can figure it out, though. Anywho. Um, I'll know in a minute or two if I'm going the wrong way, but I'm pretty sure I'm headed towards my house. There's still places around my house. I went to run an errand. There's still places around my house that I don't know. I'm not familiar with wherever I am right now. I'm Main Street, downtown Hiram, I believe. Yeah, that's where a pawn shop is. Um, anywho, that's where the Freemason Lodge is as well in Hiram. So, Paul Parsons, City Hall. So, Paul Parsons, um, was a skinhead, and his sister, Jane Parson, was a hair cutter at Super Hair 313. Don't think it's gonna be that big of a deal, right? Wrong. Always. I won't tell it to you if it ain't worthy of telling. Okay? Yeah, no, don't tell Um... Paul Parsons' sister worked at Super Hair 313, and uh, I'm going out of the way from my house. And um, she cut hair there. She worked there. Okay, 
Rob Lowe, who most are gonna at least know the name. Some of you aren't even gonna aren't even gonna know the name. Rob Lowe was like Johnny Depp of the last generation. Okay, it's really good looking guy. Look him up, Rob Lowe. There was a Rob Lowe scandal in those days. It was Jane Parson. It was my buddy's sister who Rob Lowe came here. When Super 313, it's just, you know, la di da, renowned known haircut in place. 70 bucks just to get a haircut. Um, Yahtzee, Yahtzee, all the um, artsy people. I don't got nothing against gay people. I've said that, but I know a lot. All the people that worked there were homosexuals, okay? No problem, I don't care, whatever. Whatever, you, whatever your pick is. Um, Anyways, okay, so, uh, at this time, Jane Parsons, and you can look this up, wore the Super Hair 313, and she was underage, and I'm not saying anything that's, that you can't find, I'm not throwing anybody under the bus, yeah, maybe show, you know, bringing some shit up, and some people might get mad, excuse me for the foul language, some people might get mad, very unlikely, Maybe one day if I blow up, but as of now, I don't see it. You know, a lot of, they're, they're so, you know, I'm not, I'm not patting myself on the back. I, I'm just telling you how it is. I was very well known in my area, in my town. You know, I'm just that type of person. Big mouth, loud mouth, loud, all that. Um, you either love me or hate me. I'm not saying I was the most popular person, but I was very popular. And a lot of it for, for bad shit, you know, I was known for fighting and, Picking fights and you know running dirt and you know I, I had a good and bad name. I had a bad name, you know. I, everyone knows who I was in you know several schools districts. Anywho, so how did I tell? How, how was that? At that point? I don't even know how. I don't even know where I'm going with this. Maybe it'll come. Have an ADD moment and I just blazed. Um, so Jane's. Uh, so, oh, what I'm getting at, what I meant, is that, um, you know, there's people that'll see my videos, there's people that'll never see my videos, there's people that I knew and knew and, and don't know, um, I haven't broadcasted it like that, you know, it's not like I go around in my city and, you know, flash my name around, but there's probably, you know, hundreds of people that don't know that I have a, a channel, or they'd be on there. They may not be on there supporting, like I said. You either love me, or hate me. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie and sugarcoat. It's probably more people that dislike me than like me. I'm just telling, giving you facts, okay? So, um, you know, I've only had one person interject in all this. Jeff Hutcherson, guy talks about we played football growing up, and I kicked the crap out of this kid, Russell Burnham, every weekend, all during. Uh, the winter we play football we meet this um, neighborhood up the street and we meet it halfway which is now a school and we play football and we fight and so this guy Jeff Hutcherson was there in those days he commented and that's the only person that's said anything that's come to me out of my past that's that knows me from besides you know just being on YouTube or whatever through social media I've only con contacted one person so far, you know, think of, you know, there's hundreds of people, and this is for everybody, you know, you went to school, and you went to school with so many people, you know, there's several hundred people graduating your class and all that shit, and I was ADD Mike, you know, so I'm not saying I had the best, you know, I, may, I was quite popular, but not, you know, not good, you know, it's a the dumb LD kid to a lot of, you know, to the snobs and people like that, you know, it's a dumb, stupid kid, druggy, all that, so like I said, you know, there's a lot of people that dislike me would probably talk shit on me, but I've only over entered, come into contact with one so far, okay, Jeff Hutcherson, so what I'm getting at is, so I'm thinking this Paul Parsons one day, you know, um, you know, somebody, one of these guys may see this or, or, or hear, interject, you know what I'm saying, people, you know, I post this so people that are on my Facebook 
I'm all, I used to be friends with a lot more people I went to high school with. Now, not so much. I've had, I've gone to jail a few times while having Facebook, and so you know my shit always gets, excuse me, gets messed up every time I go. You know, my world gets rocked upside down. So I got you know a couple of counts. I got a count or two. You know, it's got 400 you know people went, that I knew in that day, and that you know that account's long gone, and also. I've not wanted to um, push my name in my growing up area and like that because it's embarrassing, like I said, being truthful and honest. Not been, you know, I'm not, this is not patting on myself on the back telling you that I used to be a junkie. You know, I've, I've damn near died and I got, you know, I've been through hell and back. That's nothing to brag about. It's damn sure nothing to be, you know, proud of. I'm hoping that it helps and changes people. So, one of these days, this shit's going to come back and bite me in the ass. But, I'm only there again. I'm telling, you know, truth and the world and what really goes on and has gone on. I'm telling you how I see it. How it's been. Uh, you know, I'm 50. A lot of you are way, way younger. You know, this is... A, I'm sure it's a mind F to people that I have all these stories and they just don't stop and they're every single one of them just sounds like BS like I said I've lived that since I was 15 I'm 49 now do the math I got 30 years of insanity okay it, I've only bringing a portion of it to light so this guy I'm in class with his sister's screwed Rob Lowe, and she's underage, and so this is like an underage kind of sex charge thing, right? This was, um, this was whatever, uh, way out there huge, um, news, you know, like, you know what I'm saying, like the top of the charts type shit, this was that in those days, okay? 11 Alive, all the, uh, ambulance chasers were at our school, 24 7 girl had it couldn't be you know do this and that had to have security at one time it was crazy during those days and they put this guy paul parsons out in school with and they put him on tv and they blasted him said all this dirty dirty nasty shit about this kid this guy um you know ld sister whore yada 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 you could imagine, she worked at this place, Superhair 313, that's got these kind of contacts, okay, whatever, whatnot, right? Um, she worked at Superhair 313, so the, the news and all that, and you know, your ambulance chasers and your, you know, your gossip colonists were all over that shit. They were all over Superhair 313, became a, um, a circus in those days, our high school was a circus, there was a few things that had gone on at our school, where our school was having, you know, you could damn near, once a week, you'd see the film crew. It might be right up the street, but right around the area, there's always wrecks, drugs, and this, that, and, the, and all kind of crazy shit's gone on there over the years, right? Way, way out there shit. Let me give you, for instance, the guy Todd Ruth that, um, that built the ramp with me, okay? We pull out of our parking lot, and right across, you pull out of the parking lot, and you go right or left, out of the high school parking lot. Somehow, straight ahead on the other side of the road, is this huge ass rock, this boulder, right? Somehow, Todd pulls out of there, and gets his little Fiero TP in on this thing. I come out of the, out of, out of the parking lot one day, and my buddy Todd... Ruth, who helped me build the ramp, his car's literally teeter-totting on this huge rock outside the parking lot, okay? There was this guy, Chuck Hendricks, maniac dude, always wanting to fight, way out there, he's been to prison several times, Chuck Hendricks, used to hang out with all those fake wrestlers, tried to make a name for himself, was a big drug dealer, this kid's got a, this dude's got a, uh, a story on his own, Chuck Hendricks, bring that up one day. He tried to fight me one day. Um, he used to, real close to there, um, he used to get, he would, he had a old muscle car, right? And every day, 
after school or in the mornings, he would go and he would fishtail his Grand National, but Grand National souped up, money in it, all that, right? Mom's spoiling him. Don't know the whole story. His brother was as bad as worse. Chuck comes out every single day where he's leaving and picking up his girlfriend. He's wrecked right there. This is on my way to school. Once a week, I shit you not. It had it happened at least three to five times in one year. And in one of those years, he would wreck at the same intersection, coming out there fishtailing, acting like an idiot. He wrecked at the same intersection like more than five times, right? Like silly shit. You could almost count that it was going to happen. And so, this is, so, so there was always, you know, always something that happened all the time, all through high school, all that, remember, all kind of crazy mad shit. This guy's wrecking there, and, and I could be way off, it could be, you know, him doing it uh, once a month or some shit. Like I said, he did it umpteen times, wrecked his vehicle, and was wrecking at the same time. He's a madman. I pull up to a party one time, Matt Clapp's house, with this girl that I'm friends with. I pull up, he's drunk as hell, he comes out to the car, he's yelling and screaming and beating on my car. He's bigger than me. I wouldn't want to fight him. Not drunk, I'd rather fight him sober. He's a big dude. I was timid, truthfully. He's got a hundred, you know, fifty, hundred pounds on me. I don't want to fight him. I pull up to a party one day, he's beating on my hood. Fast forward, umpteen, twenty gazillion years. And I'm in the hotel, the one that I just did the videos on, and I'm out in the parking lot one of these nights trying to get Zach in, and he calls. This dude, Chuck Hendricks, calls me out of the blue. And I haven't talked to him in 20, 30 years, right? <laughs> so he just calls me out of the blue, sees, you know, through Facebook, whatever, however he got, however it came to be, and I heard, hadn't heard from him in, um, you know, umpteen decades. The last time I saw him was at a bar at, at 285 Roswell Road. You should know that story. So then he calls me out of the blue, right in the middle of, of the shit I'm doing with Zach. I've, I've truthfully didn't even remember that until about two minutes ago until I started thinking about it. I never even thought about that kind of shit. So this guy calls me way out, way into the future. So these were the kind of shit that was going on in the days. Like I said, police was come to our school on the daily and that's and you've seen the video yourself the video with uh what's his name the guy says our school was the number one drug school in the nation when i was 15 so imagine that you you heard it with your own two ears our school lassiter marietta georgia was number one drug school ahead of um ahead of the next one was somewhere in L.A. and the other one, it was either, De I think it was Detroit. We were number one. So imagine, imagine those days, being the number one drug school in the nation. Maddening days. We seen cops every single day. Every single day I knew I had to be cool and coach because there was within a two, three mile period that you'd get close to the school that you damn sure better be, you know, zips locked up tight because they would have, like I told you, they had drug dogs. they bring drug dogs in on the sneak all the time I hope this was a banger I'm just getting warmed up people stay ADD ha <laughs> ha